بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة لأهل التقوى واليقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين بالقاسم محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين لسيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وارواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفدا واللعنة الدعوة على أعدائه مجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته We had stopped at the stage of explaining materialistic ideology and divine ideology In a materialistic ideology it is based on denial of God and a divine ideology is based on accepting a God or God and hence you study the true religion because then there will be many ideologies that accept God <coughs> which are divine ideologies uh, supposedly but they are not the correct ideology there may be many religions that believe in a God but they do not believe in the true God the, or the ideology is not based on the true religion uh, so you have the basic roots of religion which are Tawheed which are you know the, the acceptance of the divine unity or oneness of God or just accepting of God the prophethood or messengership and the, the hereafter and then you will come towards Islam where you will say that these are the three main things or usul as they're known to be but there will be many other beliefs that are connected to these beliefs they are beliefs but they're not usul deen okay so they will be for example in the in the in the Sunni faith for example belief in angels and the books um, and many other things and in the Shia there will be ulama who will bring in uh, two other asl. They will bring in two other beliefs that are known to be amongst usul deen They will say that no, we need to mention adl as an independent usul deen because there are people who give it wrong definition. Or they deny the divine uh, justice. And they will bring in the divine leadership or the imamat as uh, one of the parts of usul deen because there are Muslims who deny imamat completely. So they will say it is amongst the usul deen Otherwise, it is only a continuation of risalat. Not nabuwat, but risalat. Risalat is a general term that means that the leaders are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can be angels, they can be the prophets and the imams. But the imams and the prophets are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's it, and no one else. That is the concept of risalat. But because there are Muslims who deny imamat, so the Shias have chosen the imamat to be mentioned amongst the usul deen That no... Denial of it would mean that you have denied a whole asl, a whole preliminary, a whole uh, base that is in Islam. And that's why the Shias mention amongst the usul deen imamat, other than uh, the, the, the first four. They will mention Tawheed, Adl, Nabuwat, Imamat and Qiyamat. So they'll have five usul deen, the divine unity, the justice, the divine justice, the prophethood, the divine leadership, imamat, and the hereafter. Um, because uh, the believers of the divine religions have denied or have altered and have changed the, the messages that the prophet brought, the prophets brought, uh, that's why you need to uh, analyze which religion is correct. People have changed the books, they have changed the beliefs. For example, Trinity was brought in, the Bible was changed, the basic concepts were changed. One point needs to be kept in mind here that the first person that Allah sent on earth was a prophet. So no one can complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can say, Ya Allah, you sent me in a time when there was no messenger. So I could not get a message. He said the first person that I'm sending is a messenger, is, is a prophet, is a hadi, is a guide who will guide the people. And the Quran says, وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had." Every people, every nation has had a guide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كُنَّا نُحْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We have not destroyed any village, any 
uh, inhabitant on earth, any population, without sending previously a guide to them, a messenger to them. A messenger came first, invited them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then uh, came the punishment when they denied him. Now, the scholars argue that, and, and also the psychologists argue, that human beings are born with this instinct and this nature within them that they want to know. They want to find out. They always want to know what is behind that, what is, what is the reality of something, what is the reality of so-and-so. Whatever they know, they want to know the realities of. You know, they want to know more. From the birth till death, they always want to know. It is a human, this is a human instinct that they want to know more. Why did that happen? Why did so-and-so politician lose? Or why was he accused? Why? Why? You know, this why behind everything is in human nature. This is what provokes him to find out, is there a, a being, unseen being that exists? If an unseen being does exist, then is there a connection between him and the, and the human beings? If there is a connection between the two, then does he give you laws to, to live your life? Does this life and the hereafter, if there is a hereafter, have a connection between the two? Are they in any way connected? So human beings always want to know. Now, recent psychologists have been arguing that there is an instinct in the human beings that is known to be the God gene. You know? We always want to have a God, a God. We all want to have a God. Um, many psychologists have argued this and based on that, many of the Islamic scholars also say that this is what the Holy Prophet had said, that Kullu mawludin yuladu ala fitratil Islam. Every child is born on the Islamic nature in the belief. The fitrat is the nature or the belief in one God. But now the psychologists argue, and Ayatollah Jafar Subhani is one of the contemporary uh, theologians. He's one of the biggest living theologians, experts in ilm kalam kalim He accepts that argument. That no, it is not one God, but it is a God. So your nature says that there is a God, believe in a God, not the God. He says, yes, that is what the Holy Prophet is saying. So if you guide him, and he follows his instinct, and he questions himself, then he will get to the God. But in his instinct, there is the question for a God. But many argue, no, in your nature, there is the argument for the God. Atala Misbah, as he says, we don't need to go down that path. Because what may happen is, the danger of that argument is that a person may come and say to you, I don't have that nature. <laughs> My nature doesn't invite me to Allah subhanahu wa My nature doesn't invite me to a God. So you don't need to go down that path. Is it a God or the God or whatever? Uh, now, there is this sound inside you that is saying that, yes, you should go and search into the concept of God. Many say we should ignore it because there is no benefit of it. What is the answer to that question? You should ignore it because there is no benefit. The answer, Atala Mishra Bhagyazi says that, well, hang on. You need to see the probability that if, had there been a God, which you have denied, what are the consequences of denying it? Are the consequences very little? You know, like the, there is no result. There is no problem in denying that God. Nothing will happen. Or no, something major will happen. Everyone following me so far? If God existed and you denied, I don't want to go the, down the path of accepting a God. What will happen? Will you have an eternal a base in, in, you know, in, in, in hellfire? Or will you have an eternal, if you accept it, will you have an eternal life in the paradise? Because the probability of going to hell is so high, an eternal life in the hellfire, it says don't ignore this, this call from inside you. Don't ignore it. Because the probability is high, then you would not ignore that fact, that there, is, there may be a God. Okay? Especially, especially, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, if not a hundred and 